Welcome, everyone. So, it's Halloween. There's no better time to lose yourself in an alternate identity than Halloween. So you guys have walked into a place that you had no idea that you're going to walk into tonight. We're going to go deep into the Matrix, something that you guys may have seen. Has everyone seen the Matrix? Yep. Who's not seen the Matrix? Has anyone not seen the Matrix? OK, there's one person. For those that have, sorry, I didn't mean to point you out like that. <laughs> For those uh, that have seen The Matrix, you all know that uh, it's a story about somebody, Neo, who ends up taking the red pill and finds himself in an alternate universe, a, the real reality. Right? The world that we're all in today is just an illusion, according to The Matrix. Now, this is a movie that is my favorite movie. Everyone has a, you know, if you ask somebody what their favorite movie is, everyone says, I don't know, there's so many different choices. This is my favorite. And the reason why it's my favorite is because it is based upon the concept of Zen. And Zen has been something that I have been pursuing for the last seven or eight years, or as we're going to find out, for all of my life. I was destined to be here tonight just as you all we're destined to be here with me. I manifested you all tonight. You are supposed to be here tonight. And we're going to make a decision tonight whether you want to take the red pill to see the truth for the first time or to take the blue pill and deny the truth. So we're going to start there, all right? So everyone has a red pill and blue pill, right? OK. So, but before we get along, Donovan, before we go on, there's one thing that I want to start to make sure that we understand. There's a word called spacebar. Wu Wei. Wu Wei has a lot of definitions. It's a Zen word, and at its essence, it means the action of non doing. I like to call it going with the flow. Wu Wei is this idea that there is an energy that we all are part of in this universe that carries us in a certain direction. And we can choose to either go with the flow or fight the flow. So Wu Wei tonight is about going with the flow. All right? And I want to make sure that we're all connected. So when I say Wu, I want you all to say Wei. All right? So Wu. One more time. Wu? Wei. All right, good. That means we're connected, all right? That means we're going with the flow. We are all going in the same direction. Wu? Wei. Perfect. Okay. Zen is about this idea of letting go. Zen is about the idea of saying that, you know what? The, the idea of Zen is really this idea that there is a dialogue that's going on in your head. Does everybody have? This little voice in their head that tells you what to do. Very obnoxious. Tells you to get up in the morning. Tells you where to go every day. Tells you all the things that you should do that you really didn't do. That voice is the illusion. Just like in the Matrix, that voice is not real. And we're going to take the red pill tonight to prove to you that it's not real. So what happens with this voice that's in your head is that this is the voice that controls your actions. That when you get up in the morning says, you know what, I've got a whole list of things that I got to do tonight that I really don't want to do, but I should do. And it's endlessly telling you, do this and do that. So you're a slave to this voice. It's controlling your actions. What would you pay to get rid of that voice? Because this voice ultimately is the source of all the anxiety, all the fear that dominates your life. I'm going to give you a quick story, and this is an analogy. So Dylan talked about the podcast being full of entrepreneurs. Who's all in business here? Is anybody who runs a business? All right, so I see a number of hands in the audience that run a business. These are folks that are going to understand the analogy. For me, I'm a, an investor. I am a private equity venture capital person that 
gets to pick and choose who I'm going to back and support and invest in. Now my selection criteria is very, very tight. I have a very small, narrow window of people that I want to invest in. And so for the 98, 99% of the people that I don't invest in, this is my story and my metaphor for saying, I'm sorry, but I can't invest in you. Does anybody fly? Is, anybody, is there a pilot in the audience somewhere? There's one pilot. Pilots are an incredible breed of people. We all get on a plane with no doubt, even better, he flies a helicopter, even more dangerous. We have no doubt about getting on a plane and putting our life and safety in the hands of the pilot on the plane, right? Don't even think about it. Just assume this pilot's qualified. I have a childhood friend, uh, his name is Tom, who is lifelong dream was to be a pilot, right? There's the beauty of just being in the air, something he wanted to do all his life. And so we would talk about being a pilot a lot and what it required to be a pilot. And for the longest time, I couldn't understand the criteria for it, which is essentially hours in the cockpit. That's really all they care about is the hours that you're in a plane flying the plane. Now, they have some tests here or there, but ultimately if you ask a pilot, he's going to say how many hours you have. They don't care what you fly. They don't care where you fly to. You can fly around in a circle for all they care. All they want to know is the number of hours. And for me, for a long time, it was, it was something that I didn't quite understand. Why is that such the important criteria? Isn't intelligence important? Isn't where you fly, what you fly important? But the answer is obvious. And the answer is the more hours you spend in a plane flying, the greater the probability is that something's going to go catastrophically wrong, right? The engine will go out. You'll get hit by lightning. You'll run out of fuel. You'll get lost. And the fact that you're still alive to talk about it, by definition, means you're a good pilot. If you're a bad pilot, you're dead, right? That's the criteria of a good pilot is that you have the ability to be cool under pressure. And as every pilot knows, that's the criteria for success, is that when things are going catastrophically wrong, running up and down the aisles saying, oh my god, we're going to die, is not helping the cause. And so the important part of being a good pilot, good pilot is to be calm under pressure to suppress the anxiety and the fear of the moment that impending death is seconds away. And I'm sure you've all heard of the word Zen, which oftentimes gets associated with cool, right? That's what they mean, cool under pressure. The ability to let go of fear and anxiety in the moment. So, as I said, what we're going to do tonight is to give you all a choice between the red pill and the blue pill. The red pill stands for the truth. You're going to walk out of here, if you take the red pill, in a completely different state of consciousness. Your life will no longer be as what it was when you walked in. That's the choice for the red pill. This is about Zen, as I said. The, so the, the movie, The Matrix. The movie was written and directed by the Wachowski brothers, who happen to be Zen Buddhists. They are practicing Eastern philosophy scholars. And so the movie, The Matrix, is really a movie about enlightenment. So when you take the red pill, when Neo takes the red pill in The Matrix, it's really a choice between whether he wants to live in the world that he lives in today or to wake to a new consciousness. And that's what the, move, that's what the word Buddha means, okay? We've all heard of Buddha. The definition of Buddha is an awakened one, which means that if you all aren't a Buddha yet, you're all, you are all asleep. Despite the fact that you're sitting here in this room thinking that you're conscious and awake, you're asleep. And the red pill is meant to wake you up. 
before we do, there's one word of caution. Okay, I put, abandon all hope, ye that enter up on the screen. This choice is an abandonment of hope. This choice has a warning sign. This choice is enter at your own risk. I can't show you what awakening is. I can't show you what enlightenment is. It's the decision that you all have to make yourself, but understand this. If you make this decision, it is your choice, and I'm not telling you you'll be happy with the choice. All I'm telling you is it's the truth. And I've essentially done it already, which is what Morpheus does in the Matrix is tells Neo that he understands the anxiety that we all feel, right? There's, there's an underlying angst in all of us. Who wakes up to an alarm in the morning? Does, everybody, who, does anybody wake up to an alarm? Who doesn't wake up to an alarm? Right, we, have a, we have a few people who don't wake up to an alarm, okay? Congratulations for not waking up to an alarm. That alarm represents the angst that everyone is living under, the angst that says, I have to do something. I have to be somebody. I have to make my life mean something. My life has purpose. And in the Matrix, Neo basically says, it doesn't work for me. There's this underlying anxiety that I cannot get past. It's the same anxiety that keeps you all awake at night. Who, does anybody sleep like a rock? All right, a few more hands. But it sounds like the, most, the majority of us have a difficult time sleeping. That's also the matrix at work. The inability to put the mind at rest is the matrix causing a problem for you all. So we're going to make a decision. The decision time has come. Everybody got their red pill, blue pill? The red pill represents a new consciousness, the truth, the blue pill represents denial. I want you to make your decision now. Okay, so make your decision. Choose which pill you want, red pill or blue pill. Did anybody take the blue pill? One person took, two people took the blue pill. Okay, so for those who took the blue pill, everything from here on out is a lie. Don't believe a word that I say. Don't believe a word that's happening in this room. This is just a figment of your imagination. For those that took the red pill, we're going to now get into the decision to take that red pill. What was it that made you decide to take that red pill? In Western psychology, Freud has a term called the ego. The ego is that running dialogue in your head that interprets the reality around you. It's the idea that says, I'm somebody. This is, this is who I am. This is how I interact with the real world. Reality, as you can see, is what's the truth? And as we're going to find out, if I prove to you that this ego in your head, this dialogue in your head is not real, then the reality that you think you're in is not real either. So let's get into it. I've asked you to make a decision about this red pill. From the very beginning, I said there's going to be a choice to be made. The real question is, when did you make that choice? In fact, there was a point in time where I even said, make your decision now. And then I added some more information afterwards and said, oh, but it's just a piece of candy. The reality is that you never made a choice. There's no one point in time that said, this is the choice that I'm going to make now. In fact, you could have at any point in time changed your mind. You could have taken the pill, put it in your mouth, and spit it out and said, no, I'm not, I'm not going to take that red pill. 
It was only until you swallowed the red pill that you made a choice. But if I said to you, did you make the choice when you swallowed, you wouldn't say yes. You would say, no, no, I made my decision before I swallowed. I made my decision at some other point in time. The reality is, is that you never made a decision. You felt as if you wanted to take the red pill. In fact, you made the choice to take the red pill before you even walked in the room. I made the red pill all about truth. And truth was important to you. So you decided to take the red pill. Let's take another analogy. Why are you here tonight? At any point in time, you'll say to me, I made a decision to be here tonight. You could have walked out the door when you're on your way here and somebody could have said to you, hey, guess what? I've got tickets to the show on the Strip, Cirque du Soleil, whoever, you, whoever your favorite person is. Somebody may have come along and said, I've got a better choice for you. And in an instant, you would have said, you know what? I don't want to go to that podcast. I'm going to go to the show. And that would have been your choice. And you would have forgotten about this altogether. What you're really doing is you're going along through life 